Hey, good morning and welcome back, all you I'd rather fly all day types. It is me, Captain T, with the Pilot to Pilot Network. Hey, we're doing a little brush up for a biennial flight review today. It's a little break from the work on the RV, and the RV is proceeding slowly. Come on along and see the progress we're making on those tail feathers. So this is just one more example of how you get hung up on a project that you buy that's partially complete. Um, I was elated when I was hauling parts out of the basement, and I discovered that, yes indeedy, I had strobes, man. I got an entire strobe kit with all kinds of wiring and capacitors and, and, a, and a power pack. I got a power pack with it. Got a power pack there that goes with it. And I got strobe lights. Look at that baby, huh? Strobe lights. Yeah, so now if I open this up, you'll see what I got. Is I got a screw for mounting. Let's take that out of there. And another screw for mounting. And I got a strobe light. And a gasket. And a base and a connector. It's not red, it's not green. There's no position light. There's no bracket to mount it with. There's no lens over it. It's a strobe light. One each. I have four of these. They're all clear. Not sure how I'm supposed to do anything with that. So as a result of that foobar, Captain T consulted the rectangle of knowledge on the interweb and uh, called some handy guy in Pennsylvania what makes the exact unit that I need to put together. This is the uh, tail beacon. It has uh, two position white LEDs and a strobe. And then we have a position light. This would be the right side, it's tagged green. And again, light emitting diodes and a strobe. Now I'm not sure I'm gonna need this cover. Uh, I may very well pull that off of there, I don't know yet. It may be in the way. I may like it, I may not. Uh, this is not by way of endorsement. I'm not endorsing anybody, but I did some shopping online and uh, strobe systems have gotten exorbitantly expensive. And uh, most of them come from China or someplace over there, J.A. Pan. And uh, these come from Pennsylvania. These are Kunselman. Kunselman. And the, the other nice thing about working with Kunselman that I like, I made four or five calls to companies to ask them about their product and to get some specifics. And Dick Kunselman was the only one that answered his phone. I have a low threshold of companies that uh, hold themselves out as being for the public, but they won't take your emails or your phone calls. I don't like that much. So uh, these come from a guy who at least puts the pieces together in the United States, and I like that. So uh, we're going to go with Kunselman. We got uh, cabling and connectors, fixtures, shrink wrap, butt connectors, power pack, triple magnum three, baby. I'm sure I can make that work. It's going to be tight, but they all are. And I'll bet you I can cut a hole that'll fit in there, and I can drill holes for mounting, and I'll figure out a way to do it. Now, I did this on my 8, and this piece right here is very hard to get into. It's hard to get down in here anywhere. So you're better off doing something with a hole here and getting the mounting holes drilled and then working your mounts and put it all in from the outside. So that's the plan, Stan. Well, it's day two of the one hour position light installation system. The uh, Kunselman bracket is giving me a run for my money. There's really uh, no accommodation made for mounting a light other than it's molded where the light would go. So uh, we had to do a little 
fabrication and a little epoxy work. So it's kind of time for the great uh, unveiling. Uh, nothing, of course, is is square. Even the even the mount is not square. It's going to be what it's going to be. You know, it's an airplane. In the words of John Monet, what are you sweating? It's just an airplane. <laughs> if it's too big, just cut it off. <laughs> it's just an airplane. Yeah. So this is just aluminum tape I put in there to. There's the epoxy that ran down. We'll be able to clean that out, I hope. A couple of nuts here holding things in place. Studs were held in place with the base and then uh, epoxied in place inside the rudder bottom. I put a small aluminum fence in there just to keep epoxy from getting absolutely everywhere it didn't need to be. Ah, fit and finish takes forever, uh, especially you would think the tail feathers would be pretty simple, but they're not. Got a, a pretty good bubble in the gel coat when they put this together. Um, not a not a great glass job, but uh, we're going to clean that up and we can fill it. A little spot right down here on the bottom where it was cracked. So a small batch of green goo was uh, mixed up and slathered into the bubble to fill it up. This stuff is uh, magic. I decided not to bore anyone with the uh, process of up drilling the pilot holes and uh, deburring and uh, dimpling and getting ready to rivet and just move on to uh, riveting. So those portions you're not going to see. And there you have it, friends and neighbors, just like that. The rudder bottom is now complete, except we get this all set up for a light mount. Got a nice tight fit here. I think I'm probably going to finish it off anyway. I got some finish work to do up here around the uh, actuator. So I'll do that. And then uh, fit and fill. Fit and fill, fit and fill, fit and fill. We are fond of saying here at the Skunk Works that you never throw anything out. Uh, right and left. Uh, when we cut this notch in the base here, the rudder base, um, there's no way to get it around this angle without just cutting a notch in it. But you never throw anything away. These little pieces that came out of there, do a little massage on them, they go right back in there. That's a whole lot less area to have to fill uh, to clean up. So sand, fill, and repeat, as the uh, title says. The green goo is everywhere by the time you're done, especially where you don't want it. If you think about it, these tail feathers are probably one of the more intensive portions of the build. There are 14 different surfaces that need to be fitted and filled and finished. And, uh, and uh, while they look like small, insignificant parts that shouldn't take very long, they actually take quite a long period of time you know a couple of fills you, you fill it you sand it you get it about where you want it and then you do a final fill on it and you sand it again so it appears to go on forever and if you're uh, subject to allergies to epoxy and micro balloons and all that stuff like I am it becomes a real pain okay so we're about midway through the process uh, the second layer is basically just to fill 
low spots or spots you missed. Um, and there should be little or no fill required after this one. They'll come out looking a whole lot better than they did when you started. You got to go through the knot hole. You got to go through the ugly duckling. And of course, we got some spot putty to fill in uh, minor imperfections when we're done. But first, we got to figure out where we are. And so we continue to sand, fill, and repeat until we get to the end of the road. We can't quite see the end of the road from here yet, but we're getting closer every day. Hey, we're awful glad you came along today to see the progress on the RV7A. Uh, we hope we're showing you some of the things in the build that uh, maybe you don't normally see. A lot of times you see people putting on skins and driving rivets, and boy, it looks so easy peasy. But you know, it's the detail work that knocks the socks off from you, and then that's the case here. Hey, we did pass our biennial flight review, made it safely back home. Everybody's happy. We're awful glad you came along to see the progress today, and we hope you're enjoying the videos. If so, please take a minute, punch the subscribe button, and ring that bell so you get a notification every time we publish. For now, it's Captain T. We'll see you around the airport. Thanks for watching. So long.